Hey guys, Artosis here with the Race Survival Series, and A15 is doing it. All right, on a little bit of a winning streak. The last Zerg player trying to take on one of the last two Protosses to see which race will end up winning this week. 815 in the bottom left of Goodnight. And in the top right, we have none other than YSC playing under their ID, Pillbow. Okay. Uh, YSC has been looking really good lately. Uh, definitely one of the stronger up-and-coming Protoss players. But 815, I mean, he's he's looking really good. His decision-making uh, and strategies have been pretty on point. He had a great ASL Season 12. Uh, and definitely a dangerous competitor, right? Like, he is known for kind of being cheesy and aggressive. But honestly, I feel like he backs it up with good enough, uh, you know, macro plays and stuff that it's... If he can just mind game you a little bit, even based on his image to get an edge, then that should be enough to really put up a challenge against anybody. All that being said, we have YSC scouting the bottom right here with that probe. Looks like it's probably going to be a forge expand, and, you know, maybe if he finds Zerg first, it turns into a Nexus first type of play, but I do believe he'll have to throw that forge down. Not going to find Zerg quickly enough here. Back at home. Yeah, just a pile on. And sending the probe down out. I mean, it could be like a 11 Nexus, 11 Forge. That was like a build that Rain came up with, I think. But no, nah, he sent this too early. So Forge should be going down. There it is. Second probe going out to watch for any possible incoming early pools. Uh, this probe going to go to the bottom left now. And what he's going to find is just a hatchery first. Uh, and I mean, his other probe can turn around if it wants. Or he can go for offensive cannons. A cannon rush. All right, let's do it. Let us do it. Now, what you do here, guys, so normally you bring additional drones, then you hop them over. But what the Protoss wants to do is build a pylon here so everything's tight. And then, what? see, there's the pylon. So now the drones have an extremely hard time popping over. Okay, see, he's trying to bring it in. He's trying to bring it in, but it might wiggle out. Oh, it might wiggle the probe out. And, in fact, he did it. Great defense here by 815. And the second probe has come, but there's no real recourse. Uh, in StarCraft 2, you might be able to do a quick SimCity and rewall and get a cannon up. But here, the cannons die super, super fast. And there's really nothing here. So that was a great block. Uh, both of them performed as they were supposed to there. Uh, but, yeah, 815 just was able to get the drone kind of on top of the probe. The probe started to slide, and then you just have to cancel. Uh, but, uh, you know, sometimes when this happens, the, the drone just kind of slides out and then you cancel the pile and throw down a cannon and it's like almost almost game over at that point. Uh, so a good attempt by YSC, but it doesn't pay off. It doesn't pay off. This is uh, 815 definitely has a slight edge after that. Uh, the Nexus is going down. It's not the end of the world for YSC. But obviously you want to have a better opener than that. It's It always hurts when you try something like that and then it just doesn't work, right? Because... You lose the extra minerals from the uh, probe that came down. You lose this 100, 25, and 25 for the cancels. Uh, the lost mining time of the probes is mentioned. And then, obviously, a later Nexus and everything at home. Anyways, uh, he has the cannon coming up. Just going to play normally from here. There's that cybernetics core. Uh, you know, doesn't make a second pylon in his main because he had it down here. So, a little bit rough as well with that supply block that's going to last for a little bit, right? So you have to wait for the pylon to finish to get another probe or the nexus, whatever comes first. And third base coming up now at uh, a ramped expansion here for 815. No big surprise there. It's like uh, this is generally going to be pretty popular just because it's got the small ramp and it's kind of like a crowded base. So you can definitely do some strong sim cities against incoming attacks. Whereas something like this is very, very, very wide open. It's closer, so you can rally there quicker, more quickly. But uh, yeah, it's it's easier for Protoss to harass and whatnot. Uh, that being said, the, the fact that there's a third gas here is not the biggest deal for 815. It's not likely that he'll have three gases uh, anytime soon. That's a very late game thing, this matchup. Okay, over here, we do have a single Zalot coming down to get a little bit of intel here for YSC. Drone being sent over. Few lings as well here to make sure he can block that incoming Zealot. The Zealot, of course, walking out and then coming back. We see this so often in PvZ. You want to give your opponent as much misinformation as possible. 
Spire coming up, and he gets a good scout off. So A15's play here actually looks pretty similar to how he played against Tyson in some ways, where he is getting the Zergling speed. Uh, the probe is actually living a lot longer than Tyson had it, so that's actually a very nice thing for YSC. Uh, but he is getting that Spire, so I'm I'm definitely interested, and he sees Zergling speed finish, so that's important as well. But I'm definitely interested to see if he plays it similarly, right? Like, we saw a little bit of Ogres or Gamer going on uh, from 815 against Tyson. And it actually, it felt like it worked out well. It definitely did. Uh, so are we going to see that against YSC as well? Because one thing you've got to remember, right? This, uh, These matches are all played, uh, you know, right in a row. So definitely YSC is watching what is happening in these games and already saw a strong PVC with that kind of Ogres or Gamer type strategy out of 815. All right, a few Lings up at the front. Just a light containment to see any Zalts trying to come out or anything like that. Plus one air attacks, almost halfway done. Out comes the Corsair. See where it heads to. Kind of checked over here for a possible Overlord. Going to check over here as well. Spire is done. Carapace is started. All right. it's It definitely could be uh, the Muta's coming up in a little bit. And he sits the Corsair at home. So I think the timing of his Stargate and the fact that he saw when the Spire finished, he does not want to risk it going out on the map. If you lose that first Corsair, it's almost like an invitation for those Mutas to fly in and, and wreck you. Uh, the timings are just so tight nowadays. All right, some more Scourge coming. Ah, Mutas being created also. We do have that second gas up and mining. Locks in his probe here so he can group those Corsairs. Plenty of hatcheries coming up for 815. Look at 815 just drone up so nicely here. He's about to have 37 as he starts a couple more. Starts that plus one range attack as well. But we'll see exactly how many mutas he makes here also. Uh, no real intel right now for YSC, right? Hasn't shown any mutas. And there's nothing on the map. Let's turn that vision off and you can see once again... This is one of the hardest things about playing against Zerg, <laughs> right? Is the lack of vision that you sometimes have. As Protoss, as Terran, hell, even as... No, not as Zerg. They have Zerglings and Overlords. They always have vision. Uh, but, yeah. He's going to start walking out, and we're going to see if he can figure out what's going on. Five Corsairs. They're about to have plus one as well, so that's actually pretty fearsome. A Sunken going up. Three hatches over here, so kind of nice. Goes after this Overlord. Let's see. Muta's Scourge. Not that many Scourge. Four Scourge. Like, if he can gun those down, he will wreck everything. Zalts have their speed upgrade done now. They do have that plus one attack as well, so definitely don't want to defend that with Zerglings. Uh, we do have Hydras being started. And it's actually not exactly like what we saw against Tyson. It's only four Mutas, and it's not that many Scourge, whereas against Tyson we saw, like, uh, more Mutas, but also, like, 18 Scourge or something. Now, there's still the possibility for that later, but generally when you start on the Hydras, you're not really going to see more Mutas unless there's like an opportunity later to snipe High Templars. All right, Psystorm is on the way. More gates coming up. Zealots retreating. Does have that Carapace or that uh, Protoss Armor on the way. Definitely want to get into that. Oh, more Scourge are joining. Okay, okay, so we're up to about 12 Scourge. DT just sitting in the middle. It's kind of interesting. Like, he's regaining some shields and stuff, but it's actually giving him some vision as units are being rallied over. So that's kind of nice to see those the Scourge fleet, for instance. More Hydras joining. And we have a Robo coming up. So maybe getting afraid at this point of any possible incoming Lurkers. Uh, as we can see, it doesn't seem like Lurkers are... The choice, at least as of yet, for 815. Generally, if it goes long enough, they will always come into play. But not yet. Not yet. Dragoon range for YSC as well. So certainly going to be adding in those Dragoons to pack a little bit more of a punch. Definitely very strong with the support. Oh, there's the DT. Just kind of walking under those Mutas. <laughs> This Zergling, uh, notice the locations that he's put these down. Zergling here and Zergling here. These are the third base locations that YSC would like to take. There's a possibility he takes this one, but you really want the third gas as quickly as possible. 
So, yeah, I'm not exactly sure which direction he'll expand in. Good Knight hasn't been as popular in tournaments, so I haven't seen as many PVCs on this map as some of the others. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll see about that pretty soon. Fourth base coming up for 815. Why not? We need another hatchery. Now, here comes the probe. Let's see. Is he going to make the Nexus here or here? He might actually just go for both quickly. A lot of times when you have a close mineral... What happens is they make the Nexus here, and then pretty quickly thereafter, they make it here. Uh, and it, here's the thing. I have seen uh, an okay amount, now that I'm kind of racking my brain thinking about Goodnight PVZ, a decent amount of games here. And one of the big uh, concepts of this map, because you have these four base areas. Look, actually, it's easier to show A50. Well, no, it's not because it's bar at the bottom. But look, you got your main natural third, fourth, generally speaking, right? And it's all kind of together, two ramps and a little tiny door. So that's your area. And look, we'll look at YSC. So he's got his main in the top right. He's got his natural here, third base location, fourth base location. So what's important is to zone back and forth because if someone attacks with their entire army up one of the ramps and half your army's here and half your army's here, you can be in a lot of trouble. You want to be able to move very quickly between the two areas and bring your entire forces to bear. So we'll see if YSC is, as he takes that fourth base, able to handle that. Now, there are a lot of Hydras out here. Lurkers are starting to be created as well. We hear that DT finally end up dying. The Lord's speed is done. Lurker's burrowing in some defensive locations. A lot of Hydra's still kind of running around. And look, okay, so he's getting ready for that fourth base. So this is where that defense is going to be very important. Now, YSC looks like he's going to walk out on the map. But honestly, like his army, I don't think can do very much right now. 815 has, a like, he has more supply, which is a scary thing to see from Zerg. And we don't have that many Psy Storms. Like what, six Storms? I think you got to be careful with this. You don't want to be bleeding off. I, And it's like, right now, there. okay, Hive is on the way. So, I mean, that's kind of the clock, I guess, where as Defilers come out and Cracklings come out, that's going to become very difficult. But I do think that as YSC, you want to build up that, that value of the army a bit more. He's making a lot of Dragoons, but here come some more High Templars as well. Crazy spread of lurkers right now. You can I don't think you can bust this. Like, don't forget these are ramps. So if you're trying to come uphill, dragoons have a terrible uh a terrible time because they're high damage, slow attack. So basically when they're firing uphill, it's it's brutal to watch dragoons try to kill thing on things on high grounds. <laughs> Especially when it's like a lot of Zerg units. Those missing shots are very, very painful. Okay, here we go. Getting into a position here. Another base being taken. Look at how many units he's putting over here as well. This is a this is a really big army to move over to this location, but maybe he's okay since he's almost maxed. Yeah, honestly, look at what he's got over here. Look what he's got here. This is, I guess, the weakest area. You would never actually attack through here with Protoss. That's <laughs> it's too small. Uh, but yeah, I don't think any location can realistically be broken. You're going to have to nail your storms. Uh, but we'll see if 815 spreads this enough. All right. YSC is down 13 workers. Does have that fourth base. He's still down about 30 supply. Okay, he's coming up and storming. Oh, those are some great storms going down. The Dragoon's coming in. Oh, my God. These storms are just madness. He is going to cut through this very quickly now. Uh, very little left over. The Observer's starting to move forward. Yeah, and this is going to get canceled. That was excellent. That was He just killed like 20 supply or 25 supply units instantaneously there. Where's the observer? Oh, it's moving away? Okay. Well, I guess that lurker might save the hatchery. That's kind of hilarious. Now, a big counterattack coming down. Oh, man. I mean, YSC sent his whole army over there. And now you can see that's getting punished very, very quickly. Nothing here at all to defend except for a few Psy Storms, which is not going to be enough. He does have some cannons up here that might slow things, but he's losing that third base. A lot of the probes as well. YSC needs to get in here and crush this army to have any chance in this game, and it just doesn't look like a crushable army. 
with what he's got. Lurker's being spread out here from 815. All right, well, I mean, he's, I guess he's gonna end up killing everything here, but at what cost for YSC? His supply's so much lower, he's lost his base. Uh, he lost most of the High Templars that were with his army. Oh, some more being lost as well. It feels like 815 is really, really far ahead right now. Continuing those upgrades forward. Actually, good upgrades as well for YSC. Does have that plus two attack on the way also. But 2-1 is done with plus one melee and a plus two carapace for 815. It's like another drone coming up to this location. Ooh, that's a that's a juicy find. Oh no, there's a couple hydras under here at least. All right, another massive Hydra Lurker army coming up now. ISC's army standing all the way over here. And 815, man, might do the reverse sweep as he moves in. I I think that this is beginning to end right now, or ending to end, or something like that. Some beautiful storms come down from YSC, but he just doesn't have any muscle left. A few Dragoons over here to the left. But everything getting picked off. The cost efficiency is enough. Uh, Corsair is coming in trying to get like a supply block off. But even if they killed every Overlord, I think 815 would still be ahead in this game. Uh, yeah. And that means that we're going to go to our very final game. 815. Bringing it back.